So, um, we thought it's been already. a journey. <laughs> Costco, um, what we remember from our childhood. Oh my gosh, this um, has been amazing. Drugs. This and should be the podcast. This should be it. No. This is <laughs> okay. our podcast, and we've made a decision. I mean, there's yeah. no start or end, though. This is just a conversation. Okay. So, what are what are what are our words? Welcome to pushing past polite. Where we, we <laughs> talk about what matters and make the world more just. Welcome to Pushing Past Polite, where we talk about what matters and make the world a little more just. I'm Laura. And I'm Corey. And we're so glad that you're here. So let's talk a little bit about... Not, I don't want to call them New Year's resolutions, but no. Wait, first, <laughs> everyone needs to know that we're forcing our producer to participate today. Oh, thank you. Yes. Let's, let's yeah. introduce yeah. the voice you're going to hear that does not sound like ours. La voz. <laughs> Keith, thanks for being with us. I am here against my will. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing sounds That's true. more true about our dynamic here. This sounds right. Yeah. Um, so facts. talk about something you want to integrate into your life in 2023 that not a, again, not a resolution, not a word for the year. None of that. I can't live up to any of that. Right. But what's one like change you want to do for you? Who are you asking? I don't know. Who wants to talk about it first? I'm trying to say yes more. Oh, uh-huh. two opportunities. See, because <laughs> I, I could easily say yeah. I need to say no more. But say, tell me why you're saying yes no, to opportunities, you know, like even regardless of the size like I did something last night that was like 10 minutes at the beginning of our bedtime routine so you know I was like I don't know if I'm gonna say yes to this and then I'm like why not it's gonna be 10 or 15 minutes just say yes you know they'll be fine can you tell me what it was uh I was like a friend of mine is a a facilitator like I am and he's working with the school district and they're in California so they were three they are three hours ahead And so I was just talking about, um, you know, equity centered thinking around teacher retention and professional development. I love that that was a 15 minute routine before you went to bed. When you said 15 minutes, I'm like, was it someone challenging you to an exercise? No, you literally just had to join a call for a little bit. Yep. Mm -hmm. I love it. And I like my first inclination was like, oh, no, it's not at a good time. You know, the boys need to be getting to the bath and blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, well, why not? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Love to. Yes. Dad on, so daddy on, on deck. That. You take bath time. I got this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm speaking at an alumni panel uh, on this weekend for my college. And again, my first inclination is like thinking about the kids and all the things and the schedules and all the stuff. And then I'm like, yes. Mm, good for you. Good for you. I love that. Keith, how about you? What's what are you doing differently for you in 2023? Well, I just moved, so I guess that would be the big thing. <gasps> Getting rid of cold weather for your life sounds like a gift to yourself. Yeah, after almost 40 years, I've decided to ditch Northeast winters, and I'm in St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg, not Russia, because that would be cold. No, <laughs> Florida, no. <laughs> and I would definitely end up in prison. <laughs> <laughs> we would trade for you. I would start a new campaign, Brittany Griner and you and the guy who's still there from the military. <laughs> Absolutely. Definitely safer politically. Oh, well, I don't know. Florida? I don't know. Uh, that's true. Moderately <laughs> yeah. safer in Florida. <laughs> that's the one thing everybody warned me about. They're like, don't mess with Florida cops. So, yeah, that's uh, that's my resolution is uh, don't get arrested don't anywhere. I think, well, I've actually introduced my son to... The concept of a Florida man headline in the news. So if you Google Florida man and like your birthday or date, it will give you a crazy headline of something a crazy Florida man has done. Oh, And I censor them first before I share them with him. But um, there's some good ones out there. Some real gems. Well, thanks for uh, being a normal guy in Florida. Yeah, Florida man is on the podcast. On the podcast. Florida man crashes the pod. I love it. Um, Okay, what about me? I am noticing... Okay, so this is not a get in shape type thing at all. This is not like I need to lose weight thing. 
I, I'm not doing that. I'm not buying into any of that. However, it's like I don't want my bones to crack things yeah. or my or my joints. I am noticing, you know, I think about it like, of, of course, obviously I was younger. But, you know, when you're younger, you feel pretty strong. My dad used to joke about like, hey, if I need to move a piece of furniture, don't worry, Laurel, help me. <laughs> like, I'm not tiny. I'm strong. I got this. And then I had kids and I was always carrying a child or a heavy diaper bag or a kid carrier or a stroller. And I could I can throw shit around real easy. Sling them. And now I don't carry children anymore. And I'm 40. And I feel like weak. Um, and it maybe it's just the delta, the change from what I used to feel like. Um, but I don't like it. And I also don't like working out. And so this poses a bit of a challenge. But I really, um, Corey, you and I talked about like maybe thinking about Pilates or some kind of strength. And it just not because I'm trying to change much about anything other than how I'm feeling. Um, so that's something I want to try, but I also don't want to hurt myself doing it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you would. Pilates is like, it's gentle exercise. Gentle. <laughs> They'll gently make you cry. And there's even like gentle Pilates, you know, like everything that they do, they have versions of everything for for older people and some versions of things for pregnant people. So between those two modifications, of, I should be OK. You should be OK, is all I'm saying. Well, we have co- we have a colleague who's older than us who talked about starting CrossFit recently. Really? And that to me is uh, you're going to end up at an orthopedic surgeon in no time. Yeah. Now they swear they can modify. I don't know. I think that whole culture is like it's intense. Do it next. Do it bigger. Com- compete, you know, see who can win the world championship of things. And I just that's not my place. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm also trying um, to, like, be more presentable in 2023. You go, just What do you mean? For myself. So, like, in 2023, I'm trying to do five-minute face every day. Say more. What is five-minute face? Like, take five minutes and put some makeup, makeup on. Makeup on. Like, just, just a little bit. Not, like, a full face foundation and powder and, like, not full face, but, like, five-minute face where... I fill in my eyebrows a little bit so they look like they're united. And (laughs) not united, not like unibrow united. Not connected united, but like, you know, all the hairs in each brow, they like each other and they get along. (laughs) They've decided which way they're going. Right. They're like, you know what? Let's arc together in this direction in a more full, full, in some fullness I do the whole face in five minutes every day, but it's clearly not like it's more of like a just get the palette. OK, that's what I'm that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like yeah. I put on a little bit of bronzer into my moisturizer. I don't put on any foundation or anything like that. I put on like I wish I didn't have to put on foundation. Is that something that happened during the pandemic? Everybody stopped wearing makeup or you got out of the habit of it? Or it, like less, just less. I was like, I don't really need it. I don't like lipstick. You're going to put a mask on every time you go outside. I think that's where it started. Started it's with like lipstick. People stopped wearing lipstick. That's where it started. And look where we've let ourselves go. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like now I was when I was at lunch, I was I said, oh, my gosh, you look so cute. You have on jeans. She goes, I got dressed up for you. I was like, I got dressed up for you, too. I put on jeans, too. I remember I went to a doctor's appointment during the pandemic, like a regular checkup, and I wore jeans. And she goes, oh, you look so casual, like you're ready to go for a hike or something. And I was like, this is Sunday best right now. I got out of elastic waist pants and showed right. up. Like, I don't understand what you're talking about, that I look dressed down. Joggers are my jam. Yes. Leggings, yeah. all of it. Comfy. It, I can't even do leggings anymore. They're too restricting. <laughs> Something with all the give in the world is too much for you? So wait, what is a jogger that does not have... Like, talk to me. Show me. Give me a leg. You know, like they get tight at the foot, tapered leg, but there's a little bit of space in them. There's pockets. I don't own a pair. I own like six pair. Costco, baby. Costco. That, that's how you know you're 40. <laughs> My fashions come from Costco. Come from Costco. I didn't know Costco sold clothes. Oh, yeah. Have you ever been inside of Costco? There's a huge Not middle a section. Time. There's like a whole huge clothing section. Okay, so let's talk about what's the value of Costco. What are the things you love at Costco? Ooh. Definitely that center section. Yeah. Well, because you never know when you're going to find a gift or something comfy for you. 
And that's a great place to get jams for kids. My kids yes. jams, Costco jammies. They do Halloween costumes. They do Halloween costumes. They do holiday outfits, like dressy holiday outfits. They do coats and ski clothes for kiddos and adults. They do gloves. They do bathing suits. They do diamond rings. They do diamond. And they have really high quality jewelry. Like their their baseline is higher than like most department stores for like the quality of their stones. I go by just for the sparkle. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. It's The lighting is just right. Those things are clean. Yeah, yeah. My diamond hasn't been cleaned in I don't want to know how long. But they're also good quality diamonds. So yes. it's like they're not included. They have, you know, they're like very slightly included. The color is right. You know. Ooh, gemologist Corey Hamilton joins us today. <sighs> Inclusions? Damn. I, you, yeah. I, that's been a long time since I've shopped for a ring, so I don't remember that. Yeah. But, you know, that's like part of the sparkle. Yeah. Is not having, seeing those visible defects, nicks and defects in the stones. Yeah, Costco. And then our Costco here, and in most places except for like Virginia, I'm sorry, and Maryland, but in Virginia, in parts of Virginia, you can get alcohol. It's just a separate sp- yeah. part, right? It's like a... It's wine only. It's not spirit. Like wine and canned things. It's not in, alcohol. It's not ABC stuff. Liquor. Okay, right. ABC liquor. Right, right, right. So... State controlled. At our DC Costco, it has liquor. So like they Costco has delicious tequila. We have a ton of it because they ran out for a while. And so it was hard to get. <laughs> You're so, like, forget Costco for toilet paper. I need my tequila stash. <laughs> legit. I just want muffins as big as my face. Those chocolate muffins? I don't care about that at all. You know me. I'm like a savory person. So like, if I don't even care about that section. Mm. It's like the liquor, the meat. You could get like all the things you need for a really nice big charcuterie board at Costco. Yeah, 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 yeah. Party at your place. Yeah, man. I um I don't see the value in most of their dry foods unless you own a restaurant. Say more. Well, like the the skid of canned tomatoes or like eight pounds of mayonnaise. Like I'm good. I can't keep that in my fridge. I appreciate a deal in bulk, but honestly, typically it's not much cheaper than grocery store on sale. So yeah, I don't get that so much. Um, but I do love. I get my allergy medicine there. Uh huh. I get. Oh, Christmas cards. Oh, oh, I and this is the best deal in Christmas cards. If you're doing like a simple photo card. Yeah, I think you get 50 of them. This is episode is sponsored by Costco, by the way. Um, <laughs> it's <laughs> not wish, even. I, I wish. wish. <laughs> <laughs> goals. Season two goals. Um, Yeah, you get your first 50, I think, printed cards for like $15. Oh, and then every set of 25 after that is an additional $5. Yeah. I buy like 200 some cards because yeah. I give them out like freaking candy because it's, you know, the Shutterfly and the Tiny Prince. You could also sponsor us. We're not trying to dish your products. But I mean, it's easy. Three, four times more. Yeah. Yeah. And for something that's probably not going to stay on somebody's fridge for too long. Mm-hmm. You can get tires at Costco, Keith. That I used to do, but it wasn't worth keeping the membership just for that. I used to do that, too. Mm -hmm. Well, if you need tires, you just you let me know. We'll hook you up. Yeah, we got you. Good to know. (laughs) Um, I do have an embarrassing Costco story. I'm here for it. Are you ready for this? Uh huh. So my parents divorced when I was first year teacher. So like it was kind of this earth shaking kind of year anyway, trying to figure out post college. Who am I? What am I doing? Yeah. And um, my dad shortly thereafter, not like crazy shortly, but within a year, had d- developed a relationship with this woman who he has been on and off with now for however many years, 15, almost 20 years, currently off. Um, but anyway, my dad, as natural at a divorce, I guess, could have been nicer, but he took my mom off the Costco membership when they got divorced <laughs> and added me. And I was like, yes, sorry for your pain. I'll take <laughs> the um, Christmas cards and all the stuff. So I was on the membership. I'm using this thing actively, periodically. I go in to get my Christmas cards one year. Pick them up at the counter, right? I go to the register and they're like, what is your name? I was like, uh, Laura, (laughs) you're not on this membership. There's another woman on this membership. And this employee made me feel this big. They went on and on 
Um, yeah, Costco is definitely not sponsoring this one. The, <laughs> they said something like, you clearly don't know the man you're in a relationship with because he, you know, there's another woman on this account. It was this like huge. That's so presumptuous. And so many levels. I'm like, it is my 70 year old father, you asshole. But they wouldn't let me leave with the cards. They confiscated your coin. They confiscated. Well, they put it back until I came back with daddy, I suppose. Right. But like, what the heck? These are personalized. You're you're losing. I'm ready to yeah. pay you money and walk out and go cry in my car alone. But you want to like take it at the end? So what, what you would do if this ever happened again, which I'm sure it won't now, is you would go to the membership desk. You bet your ass it won't. I have my own membership. Right. <laughs> I know that man. He knows better. <laughs> but you go to the membership counter and you get a day pass. Oh, you're totally right. But I just wasn't on the membership was the problem. No, I know. But I'm saying oh. you can go to the front to the desk if you don't have a membership at Costco. And, and say, I'm interested get, in getting a membership. Yeah, Let me try it, it out. They would give you a day pass. Same at Sam's. And I'd look at the same manager who just mm -hmm. humiliated me. <laughs> Basically. And then the other thing that you could do to shop at Costco is if you don't have a Costco membership, is if someone gifts you a Costco gift card, hmm. you can use that to shop at Costco, and then you can just keep reloading it. That's really interesting and tricky, and I love it. Uh -huh. um, I remember that I can feel it in my body even right now. Like, I remember how humiliated I felt and, like, heat rising in my body. My first call was to my dad. Hi, how you doing? Hey. Anything you need to tell me? Nope. Nothing at all. Um, can I jog your memory? How about does Costco make you think of anything? <laughs> didn't hit him at all. Oh, honey, I didn't even think about that. Oh. I just just trying to hook up my girlfriend. Yeah, trying just to hook up my girlfriend. Who he shopped for. <laughs> he would go grocery shopping for her anyway. So I'm like, how does this? Uh, Let me tell you something. Yeah. Costco can, can make or break a relationship. Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Including... Father, daughter, this was serious. Uh, yeah, that's so funny. that's my Costco story. But I my for, I have furniture from Costco. Like same, yeah, obviously. Mm -hmm. Like doesn't everybody who has a Costco membership have it's, furniture from Costco? It's beautiful. It's great, high quality furniture. Yeah, <laughs> this is the this is the hook. You come in for the muffins, you leave with the couch. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't leave with the mayo. Yeah, it's like couch, water table. Alcohol. It's a water table. <laughs> I knew you was gonna ask that. <laughs> if you have a, if you have kids under three, you probably know what a water table is. But we'll tell you. Yeah. Go ahead. So, a water table is like an outdoor toy that you can fill with water that has like some little features and things for kids to play with when it's hot outside. Oh, like a splash pad. Like a splash pad, but it's just a table. It's a table, so it's up high, so that they can play in it. So it's extra dangerous. No, no, no. Yeah. Could tip on them at any moment. <laughs> Face in it. Whole deal. It's short and low. No, that sounds fun. I wish I had oh, something like that. Yeah, um, it is fun. Yeah. Super fun. And then you throw all your measuring spoons out there and just let them pour water. It's the best. It's yeah, it's great. great summer entertainment. No, yeah. Well, we used to have that stupid sprinkler thing that would like go back and forth and you'd run oh, through it and you'd those eventually things are amazing. step on what it. You love. Talk and hurt your foot and like... Mm. <gasps> I'm down, <sighs> man down. Yeah, we bought like this huge splash pad thing that's like that sprinkler thing, but on steroids. You know, it's like a big mat and you cook, hook the hose to it and it creates like a arc of water that you can Love. run through. But it and then it like kind of pools in the middle a little bit. Gosh, don't you remember that feeling of being a kid and being so excited to just be wet in your yard in the summertime? Yeah. Right. Just running through the sprinkler was extremely exciting. Ve yeah. Sticks were toys. This was the old days. No internet. Yeah. This is how we yeah. did things. One of my, one of our coworkers, Laura, was telling a story about his teenage son who started playing kick the can over during the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, you got to try this new thing. <laughs> he was like, I want to assure you. That this game is old AF, okay? Like, this is a World War II type of game situation <laughs> that you can Maybe are. Great Depression. <laughs> are bringing back. <laughs> My kids did something recently. It was a song they sang or a rhyme or something. And they're like, Mom, do you know this? That's like Miss Mary Mac. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> it wasn't that. But it was something like that where 
They so thought funny. they had the corner of the market on the coolest new thing. You're going to see that with TikTok, I'm sure. They're going to go back and rediscover all kinds of old stuff and think it's new yeah, again. Yeah, and think it's new again. Yes. Like like some of those good old dancing moves that had themes to them, you know, like the grocery shopping. Oh, um, that's my standby. Yeah. Sprinkler. Right? Sprinkler. Sprinkler. Yes. There were just so many uh, Roger Rabbit, Cabbage Patch, Running Man. I throw the dice a lot. Oh, yeah, right? Oh, right. That's we had go-to. so many dances that were named. Taken for real life motions. Yeah, <laughs> for real life motions. <laughs> I don't know how to like... dance, but I know how to play poker. I know how to shop at the grocery store. <laughs> I can lift up on aisle three. I got this. That's so funny. Oh, wow. childhood. How about that? Let's talk about that. Memories from childhood. Yeah. Man. Or like things that things that you love that you that our kids will never understand. Yeah, like the internet. That. Or the world without it. Yeah. Or like going to the airport and saying goodbye to somebody at the gate. Yes. I love watching Hello and Goodbyes at the airport. I'm a glutton for that, like, emotional rush. And, yeah, the fact that it has to happen in the parking lot is not nearly as sweet. No. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. Mm Uh-uh. Like, I have this picture from 2001, August 2001, when I was going back east to college. And I have like a picture with my sister and me at the gate, like, you know, the big windows at the airport and then a picture with me and my mom at the gate. And that was like the last time we could ever do that. Mm, Yeah, no, totally. Not as not as sweet without that. But I love that you have a a memory from it. Uh Uh-huh. I just thought of something else. Yeah, certainly world without Internet. Oh, being able to like I guess my kids kind of do have that where we live, which is nice. But this idea of like being outside until further notice. Right. That doesn't really happen for most kids anymore. Or the idea that you have to call someone's house and talk to their parents while the person you're calling is coming to the phone. Or the idea that there is no such thing as privacy in a conversation because the the landlines are in two central Kitchens. locations in the house. <laughs> it's in your kitchen by the it's dinner table. A, right, right. <laughs> Relatedly, when I, again, not that long ago, I think, well, ish, um, having one phone on the floor for the dorm. Like, I didn't have a cell phone when I went to college. Right. Yeah, I didn't So this idea of calling home or like your parents called, you need to come down the hallway. How about instant messenger? Oh, I loved that. Right? Like, I was one of those people who was never good at that. And I'm still probably not that great at text, right? Like, my roommate in college could have like 15 conversations going on on instant messenger. Like, and I had to focus on one person at a time. I'm like, look, I'm not even here, really. Just like I am on Zoom. You <laughs> yep. know what I mean? It's like, I'm not even here because I don't want anybody else to know that I'm here talking. Yeah, yeah. So you keep the away message up, but you keep yeah. messaging people? With the, yeah, whoever I'm trying to talk to. I get that. I get that. I'm probably somewhere between you and the 15 people at a time. Person. Yeah. I'm probably more like five. I can handle that. Yeah. How about like the art of the away message? What do you mean? And having it like just thinking about like like trying to almost vague book, right? Like signaling what you were doing, but not wanting to overshare, but making people curious or putting something yeah. mysterious in your away message. How about pager codes? <laughs> I don't think I know about codes. I know just to page someone, but tell me what these codes were. Oh, that's because you weren't buying weed in the late 90s. <laughs> so true. I was not. I was leading youth ministry while I was in college <laughs> with high school kids. I need to do life again. <laughs> I need to know the codes. <laughs> what are the codes? Well, there, I mean, there are basic ones like one, four, three means I love you. Why? Why? Is that because the numbers correspond with the letters on the keyboard? Girl. No. What, what should you ask me wait, for? Wait, wait, wait. No, let her, let her figure this one out. <laughs> one, no. four, three. One, why does one, four, three mean I love you? It's a riddle. Figure it out. <laughs> this feels like a lot of pressure. I can't touch my phone. We're recording on that. So what am I no. supposed to do? One, yeah, you have to use your mind, like the old days. One, <laughs> like four. the old days. <laughs> yeah. Thank no you, phones. Keith. This is quickly no turning Google. into a trio. I love this. No. One, four, three. One, four, three. I don't. I can't. I'm not in the thinking mode right now. What is this? 
Do you want to tell her, Corey? No, I don't know, Keith. You don't. You kn- neither of you know. <laughs> I. No. Are you serious? He Seriously. bought a lot of weed, and he. <laughs> I know you guys should have smoked we did. But I think I think it's just the number of letters. I think it's just the number of letters. That's it. Like I yep. one oh. is I, four is love, L O V E, and U is three. Well, and then I was thinking like it. the three and the letter V make the heart symbol, but I was like, that's the last word. Wow, you're overthinking. Story of my life. Yeah. Overthinking. Okay. I love yeah. you. Okay, so we got the I love you's. That doesn't get you weed. What what, what how do oh, you get no. weed? I wasn't buying weed. So I don't know. Keith was. No, it was 420 would be like. Oh, sure. Yeah. 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 But I mean, that's where. Even I know that. You know it now, but in the late 90s, it was. (laughs) Right. True. Facts. How about using this? As in a writing utensil in general or specifically an expo marker? A writing utensil in general to rewind your tape. Oh, yeah. I thought it was a pencil. A pencil, but you could use like a pen, like that had the sharpie kind of like you know. Mm-hmm. But when the when the tape came out of your cassette, or just having a mixtape and making a mixtape, or even a mix CD, or wanting to listen to your favorite song on the radio so bad so you could get it on the mixtape, or calling into radio stations. Oh yes, oh yes, or staying up all night to learn the lyrics to a song, that, or learning the choreography to a video, a music video. I uh, uh, I was never allowed that's to what, see. That's what we used to do. Couldn't watch MTV. Not allowed. Yeah. I grew up in a very conservative context. Thus the youth ministry in high school. <laughs> now that sounds like a podcast topic. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Uh, probably several. Um, also therapy. <laughs> the term exvangelical come to mind. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, not all of it, but just. No, I, I went to Catholic school, but it wasn't nearly, you know. No, you also bought weed. You were fine. You were normal. Yeah. This is next level. Yeah. My dad thought he was helping us, and it ended up being like the worst school we could have gone to. No. Been no. At the Catholic school? In terms of quality of the school or in terms yeah. of. Yeah. We found out after the fact that like most of the teachers didn't even have bachelor's degrees. And your your English teacher was really just a volunteer at the church, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, but wow. you don't know that at the time. You you realize that when you get to high school and you're like, dumb. I don't know much. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron Neville, I love that song. I love his little like vibrato in his voice. He's so cute. I love it. Oh, um, man. That's a rough time to figure out. <laughs> it's called too late. <laughs> that you didn't learn anything. <laughs> I similarly, though, went from a church school with like way low standards in terms of academic prep rigor. And there were no the reason I think ultimately why my parents shifted. Well, I'll back up. Started in private school in grade school. Um, my mom didn't like some of the content of the book we were reading. Q religious fundamentalism type vibes. She pulled me immediately to a private school for the following year. So I went from fourth grade public, fifth, seventh and eighth grade private. I skipped a grade because the classes were so small and there was one teacher teaching like two and three grades together at a time mm. and I was bored. So I worked ahead and they were like, yep, you're good. Sure. You're in seventh grade now. I am. <laughs> I skipped. I never went to my first year of middle school. Yeah. Also to all the I think sixth grade was considered middle school. So or, or considered secondary. So we were with high schoolers. I was hanging out with like 18 year olds. Um. Not appropriate developmentally at all. Talk about sketchy. Uh huh. There was a whole lot of like restrictive, like no, 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 no dating, no, 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 no drinking, no this. But then, so everybody was doing it, obviously. Yeah, because they, and not to mention because it was a no, but also because of proximity. You don't right. put middle schoolers and eighteen-year-olds with their pagers and codes together. It's a bad idea. Yeah, four four twenty all day, smoke weed oh, Jesus. every day. That's right. But I think ultimately my parents were like, huh, there are no electives. There's no sports teams. There's no advanced classes. This is probably, I thank God they woke up, but I went back to public high school. And that same realization of like, oh, I was smart there. (laughs) This is different. There are definitely smarter kids than me here. Um, Corey, I'm sorry. You look like you went to heaven 
I would think. I know. Light on. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I didn't do anything. I saw that too. I I thought you were messing around with no. something. Did you? I thought you were doing your five minute face like oh. ring light no, or something. No, I here. didn't. I didn't touch anything. I think Any that the sun came out more. Yeah. My windows are in front of me. Uh huh. And yeah. I think that the sun just came out more. <laughs> you look gotcha. like you went to heaven. Well, you look. You look. <laughs> You look like um, you look like you need fluids or something. <laughs> she, you look pale, is what I'm saying. It's not like you per like no. You don't it was the pale. wording. It was just you look sickly. I'm so sorry. <laughs> For the price of a cup of coffee, you too can help Corey. You can help Corey get fluid. fluid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take a screenshot so you could see what we're talking about. <laughs> You're offering a screenshot, but you can see yourself. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh my God, I am crying. <laughs> I'm crying. But the maybe screenshot's wait, so good, though. Maybe I need to change up my five-minute routine <laughs> in the morning and get <laughs> some more color <laughs> We need a few so more good. minutes on that face. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh wow. Okay, keep laughing. How are we supposed to end this conversation? We have literally been to Costco all over the map. We've been to Costco. We've danced. We've aimed. Aim. Oh, we've resolution. Right. It's, it's a verb. Got it. I was like, what is yeah. aimed? Yeah. Right? We've resolution. We We've resolution. We've one four three. We be, we page coded. Yes, and we talked about <laughs> private school problems. Private school problems and teacher licensure. That feels like a journey. Yeah, yeah. I I think I think we could call it. I think so too. Thanks so much for joining us on Pushing Past Polite, where you never know what you're going to get, but we'll talk about something serious and a lot of laughs too. I'm Laura and I'm Corey. Keith. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. We encourage you to go deeper in your trusted spaces or cultivate new spaces that foster meaningful connection. Please follow us on social media to keep the conversation going. We are at Pushing Past Polite on Instagram and Facebook and Push Past Polite on Twitter. Pushing Past Polite is an independent podcast with Corey and Laura from Just Educators. Our cover art was designed by Rachel Welsh to Ega of De Inga Designs, and our audio is produced by Keith at Headset Media. Until next time, don't get stuck talking about the weather. Have conversations that matter and make your world a bit more just.